Hey, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me here on KXAN Live. I'm Madison Nosek, and I want to show you guys right now a look at downtown Austin just as the sun's starting to come up. It looks really gorgeous. Oh, meteorologist Sean Kelly is moving that around. Now you get to see all of downtown. But after seeing the crazy hail that we got this weekend, we're in for a much drier and quieter week ahead. While we can't rule out any uh, like stray showers or storms, the majority of us are expected to stay dry today. But the cleanup continues after that hailstorm hit. You can see here on your screens that bright blue and kind of purple is the hail as it tore through central Texas. It was dumping chunks of ice from north of Georgetown going south, following almost right along I-35, like as you can see right on your screens. Car dealerships are also feeling the damage from that storm. This video is from a Hyundai dealership. You can see shattered windshields and dented hoods and roofs all across the lot. According to the Insurance Council of Texas, comprehensive car insurance should cover hail damage to your vehicle's body, windshield, and interior. Liability, though, typically does not cover that. Liability coverage, that is. And if you have dents and dings to your car following the hail, there are some at-home tips and tricks to remove them. For any small to medium-sized round dents, a plunger actually does work. You may need some water to make sure that you get a good seal, but you can pop those dents right out. You can also try hot water. This one works well for plastic parts of your car, kind of like a bumper. It softens the part so you can pop it back by pushing the other side. Using a hair dryer can also work, or you could always just go to the store and buy a dent removal kit. The Austin ISD School Board is running out of time to make a major decision. It needs to vote on how involved the state should be in the district special education department. The board has to make a decision before the end of the month, but last week the district decided to postpone the vote to today. The Texas Education Agency found Austin ISD repeatedly missed evaluation deadlines for students who may need special education services. This proposal would give Austin ISD the least severe method of state intervention, which would be a monitor. Last month, it promised to do better for special education in Austin's public schools. Now, this is just a reminder. I know you guys saw this last week, but just in case you didn't, that monitor would be able to observe and report back to the state, but that's only if the district agrees to meet dozens of deadlines and requirements. That would include spending half the board meeting time on student outcomes. If the district agrees to the deal, it would also be waiving the ability to appeal future state intervention. Today, Travis County Commissioners will take another pass at Central Health's budget. The hospital district you voted on in 2004 wants to bump how much taxpayers pay yearly, roughly $56 next year. But Travis County Commissioners said that they didn't want to sign off on that tax hike without Central Health including money for health care in the jail and mental health division. The Central Health Board met last night to make some changes. The board committed to better understanding those services and how they fit into the health district's mission and committed some money for short-term short solutions. Dripping Springs ISD is joining a long list of other districts in suing the head of the Texas Education Agency. In a meeting last night, the district decided to join the lawsuit. The legal challenge is over the TEA's decision to change how state grade schools. The districts are asking a judge to temporarily stop the state from issuing ratings based on the new methods. The lawsuit against Education Commissioner Mike Morath alleges the changes will arbitrarily lower performance ratings, even if their performance improved. The results of the new rating system were set to be released this Thursday but the TEA recently announced that it was going to delay the release. It wants more time to go over the data. Well, that's all I have for you guys this morning for Tuesday's top stories. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, I'm Madison Nosek here in the KXN Live studio, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.